Respect is the key to what keeps them going with one another because they respect each other a lot. They value the way each other shows up in the world and they know how to make the other one grow exponentially. Hello, collective. Okay, so again, I'm Kristen <laughs> and I'm a healer. In this video, you're going to get a full rundown of the Aries Capricorn compatibility and I don't know, all of my interpretations of it. If you would like to expand on this energy and work with me and get a full coverage of your love life or whatever relationship dynamics you are having with this particular energy, feel free to follow this link here as well as in the bio to become a part of the healing circle and start your journey um, with me. Also, you guys know that I am a global citizen and I love connecting with you all on a worldly and global level. So per usual, drop where you're listening from in the comments. Now, with all of that being said, let's get into this. I will start by saying that this dynamic is fiery, it's smoldering, it is like uh, truly volcanic. Uh, the intensity and the passion between these two run very, very deep. Uh, initially, the Aries energy stands alone in its uh, fireball that isn't grounded by very much um, besides its ram-like desire to move through the most, almost oddly enough for the Aries, the way that the fire energy comes together, it reminds me of the vision that I always get as like a ram walking through a desert. I don't know why, um, but that's them. It's They are definitely grounded, but they're rooted as in a way that fire is. Because in order for a fire, for a flame, confirmation. In order for a flame to live on our earth, there must be earth at the center of it. There has to be something some something that it's burning off of at its core. Something tangible, something literal. So at the core of every, every Aries is actually a grounded energy where they are rooting themselves to something. And whatever that something is, it could be their, their purpose, their confidence, for some of them, it could be the bare bones of their trauma, things that they had gone through that they don't want to see again, and that being the driving force behind them, uh, continuing to live life at the best of their ability. Behind every single Aries, especially masculine Aries, is someone who at a very early age got into a lot of trouble. Um, and if not trouble that he put himself into, it was trouble that found him. Something that was... Um, testing him in a way that uh, pushed him to want to do better for his life. Um, and usually they were pertaining to his relationships, his connections, um, or like a Libra, it could genuinely be like the justice system. Uh, something about um, war or something opposing in some way, shape or form. And this is the thing that uh, affected him at a pretty early age and then it pushed him to be whatever it is that he's been focused on since ever since uh, these well, I guess we're going into the masculine realm so I'll start with the masculine uh, and these men in particular have a strong drive to uh, succeed but in a way that is not just success for su success's case a lot of the time they don't always necessarily know what they want or who it is that they necessarily want to be sometimes especially high vibrational areas is really thriving or uh, for just living a life of his dreams um, actually more of the low vibrational areas tend to be tied too much to a career idea or a concept of what freedom or happiness or winning is the more high vibrational Aries man is really just trying to find what it means to live life to the fullest what does it mean to get similar to the Capricorn he's trying to get to the top of a mountain get to the top of 
of a, but his is less of a mountain and it, it kind of is a visual of being on top of the Grand Canyon. It's the mindset that I get. And he wants to be there and he wants to take in the air and he wants to breathe in that, that energy, you know, breathe in that prana, move through that chi, through his body and say, I did it. I won. I am the greatest. I am. It's like power moving through him when he can um, live the life he, he's always wanted to live, do the things that he's always wanted to do with that, that drive for adventure. Um, the high vibrational Aries is not necessarily trying to win against anyone. He's really just trying to win against his old self. Oftentimes the world he came from um, or things that he's had to overcome. He's usually just trying to win a war against himself. And when he gets to the top of that ledge, like I said, he's just breathing it in. It's like, it's like the bloodlust of living. So that's him. <laughs> uh, and on the other side now, uh, the Capricorn male is someone who is uh, similar to the Aries, he's gone through a lot in his youth. He's experienced uh, a lot of hardship in his life. Um, the Capricorn male had some kind of structure around him as a child, but then there were dark corners or crevices kind of everywhere he turned. Um, and especially in his teenagehood, a lot of things come crashing down. His ideas of viewing the world around him, his family, etc. He starts to get a very clear viewpoint of the fact that his ideas, or more like what he has been told about who it is that he is, is not necessarily always uh, true. So it could happen through like a divorce, it could happen through a revelation that he, you know, maybe his family doesn't have as much as he thinks. Nonetheless, the, the pedestals begin to be taken down and crumbled down for the Capricorn. So, with that being said, sorry, <laughs> with that being said, um, I don't want to get too deep into him because you can watch my video about the Capricorn male if you want to know so much about him. But I will just say that Capricorn energy for the Capricorn man is about perseverance. It's about ambition. Uh, he definitely is more focused on a career, on a specific goal, um, and his also could be enlightenment as well. A high vibrational Capricorn can be focused on a specific career and reaching high heights in that specific career, or it could be the journey of enlightenment in itself. Think Alan Watts when you think of that. Um, and just trying to reach the highest viewpoint of wisdom and self-actualization. And he too likes to travel, but if he's going to travel, he wants to he wants to find, you know, the remote area where no one's ever been to. He wants to go to the crevices of Switzerland and uh, speak to the old wise men about things that took place 50 years ago. He wants to go speak to one specific monk that he found in Tibet, you know, and who teaches him about a specific way of, of uh, Tibetan uh, meditation, which is mostly masculine, Tibetan meditation and diving into the bare bones of your diaphragm to awaken the root chakra. <laughs> you know, this is how um, the enlightened Capricorn male operates. So very similar to Aries. Um, they definitely deal with a lot of adversity. adversity, adversity. They deal with a lot of uh, opposition and a lot of difficulty throughout their lives to always persevere and prevail and find themselves on the other side. For Capricorn, it is about peace and wisdom. And he too has this intense passion, but it's more in a way that is uh, deep. He's, he's big on the substance, on the depth of things. And that is what gives him, um, that's what keeps his drive going and that's what feeds his hunger. Feeling like he's really uh, taking in a life of substance. His conversations have substance. The people he's surrounded by have sub has substance. Where he goes, what he does, what he achieves in his work, it's all about substance. Um, not just adventure for adventure's sake. So these are the two men, and now let's talk about the two women, the Aries woman. Uh, try to make this quick, sorry. Uh, the Aries woman is uh, definitely, her and the Capricorn woman are very similar. The Aries woman is uh, fiery, passionate, bold, beautiful, uh, statuesque as well. The high vibrational Aries woman tends to be very stationary in herself and her looks. Although she is quite a toddler, both of them tend to be like that. The Aries man and the Aries woman can be very childlike um, and very immature, but 
she gives off an air of someone who is actually the opposite. A lot of Aries women can come off like they are very mature and very balanced within themselves. Um, and a lot of this is just because she's channeled that energy. She knows when to play and she looks at adult life like it is a playground. She looks at her career like it's a playground and um, motherhood, all the different things that she does, she knows how to play with them as well as give them her and her energy and her intensity. Um, and this goes along with her looks as well. She can come off like she's a little bit more mature than she might be. And a lot of that is because it's channeled fire. When she learns how to ground herself and her energy, because remember at her core is a very rooted uh, center. She roots herself within that center and carries herself with that dignity in the way that is, uh, again, a fire that she feels like she knows how to navigate and direct. This is the kind of woman that, although her anger can be very explosive and insane, <laughs> she doesn't want to give that off. She wants to kind of give off, I'm, I've, I've got it covered. I'm, I'm very good with myself and my emotions. Um, and that's kind of how she navigates herself. Uh, throughout her life, she, uh, in her youth, she could have had a background that uh, was seemingly traditional or normal on paper. Um, and But at the same time, she kind of wanted to venture out of it. She feels like no one gave her anything. She feels like everything about who she is is something she had to create. Everything that she's ever gotten in her life, she feels like it was by her own blood, sweat, and tears. And she goes, she has like a me, 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 grab, grab, grab kind of uh, mentality in terms of how she navigates herself in the world. If she wants it, she's going to get it. And she doesn't really care what anyone has to say about it. And that goes along with her insatiable desire, um, not just in terms of her sensual, sexual energy, but also just in life. Um, if she wants it, she's going to get it. And she's not afraid of a fight. The Capricorn woman is seemingly similar, um, but different. These women tend to find each other as friends often because they tend to show up in the world very similar. Again, kind of a, a tall, statuesque kind of energy, doing their own thing, very cardinal, very original, um, relentless in that originality and doing things their way, very ambitious, very driven. Uh, I want what it is that I want and I'm going to go out and get it by all means necessary and I'm going to achieve what it is that I'm going to achieve and no one's going to stop me. Um, they are very good at standing alone, both of these women. Uh, independence is something that the Capricorn woman thrives in. Whether she wants to be independent or not, oftentimes she finds herself in that position simply because her journey is so specific and she's always having to be pushed into some form of refinement and it can be lonely at the top of that mountain. So she tends to find herself in that energy because she works better by herself in that sense and it's not just work as in career or traditional sense but she grows the most when she is solo, when she is in her independent journey. Um, the Aries woman thrives in what, what is independence, but oftentimes she tends to have a lot of people around her and she tends to, um, she'll give off an air like she's independent publicly, but usually have like a lot of people around her. Whereas the Capricorn woman um, usually is truly independent in that sense. Uh, so that tends to be their difference and it's a good thing as well as a detriment for both. Uh, and yeah, they tend to, uh, the Capricorn woman is very beautiful and um, uh, balanced and well-mannered. And oddly enough, they are opposites in that the Capricorn woman can look younger than she is, but be very, very mature. Whereas the Aries woman, when she ages versus when she's young, the Capricorn woman tends to look older when younger and have a very mature energy. When she ages, she tends to look younger than she is, but harbor a very mature energy. Where the Aries tends to look more mature than she is and harbor a very immature energy. So that's that. <laughs> now let's get into it on a more general level. So these two often find each other, the Aries and the Capricorn often find each other. Usually it's in a public dynamic. Uh, oftentimes it's it's either, depending on their age group, so it's whatever it is that they do out in the world. So if you're very, very young, it could be that they found each other at school, through, uh, or it could be through family, through family, through school institution, or when they're young and then when they're older, through work. Work is the big one where they find each other, um, or again, mutual friends. 
And why is that? Their t- connection is usually uh, drawn or, or the picture is usually painted because of what's going on socially. So uh, they find each other in these social situations as simple as they could even be at a party and lock eyes on each other. And it's this smoldering, uh, passionate uh, connection between the two. Or like I said, most of the time in their adult lives, it is work. And in their youth, most of the time, it is some kind of institutional situation, like a church or school dynamic. Um, And it's like kind of like they circle around each other for a little while. Uh, At work, they like to see each other do what it is that they do. The Aries will be very drawn to the Capricorn, finding the Capricorn to be very interesting, intriguing. What is that? (laughs) It's like the Aries, it ignites the Aries' desire to, similar to Leo, uh, where Leo will want to go on a hunt. The Aries wants to go on an adventure. And so the Aries will look at the Capricorn like, ooh, that's an adventure. That's, that's, I like how you're not so easy to figure out. You know, the, the Aries looks at the Capricorn like the Capricorn is quite mysterious, interesting, multifaceted, and full of layers. Something that the Aries isn't necessarily themselves. <laughs> so uh, Aries, oftentimes it's like what you see is what you get with them. They do carry, especially... Um, well, I would say both the men and women, they do carry an air of mystery, uh, but the mystery comes from channeled fire, the, the level at which their intensity burns, but they're rooting themselves. Whereas the Capricorn, their, their depth and their layers and their mystery truly comes from layers of personality and stuff and wisdom and you know all that other stuff you know so the Aries finds the Capricorn to be very interesting intriguing and mysterious something that they feel like they can't necessarily figure out understand or easily unravel Aries tends to look at Capricorn in a way where they they won't admit it at first but they kind of look up to the Capricorn in terms of how Capricorn does what it is that they do the Aries is like wow this person really does it like that I like how they do it (laughs) you know Uh, The similarity in terms of them at work is they both will be very successful. The Capricorn will come, whoever came first, right? If they're both on the team together, they both stand out in the exact same way, as in they both have a tall order. You know, they, out out of everybody on the team, they're, they're both achievers, they're both succeeders, and everyone knows that they're out to win. So let's say they're on like a sales team, their numbers are gonna go neck and neck with each other but they go about it in two different ways. So the Aries will go about their sales in a way that is more fast, more direct, quick turnaround, just hungry, you know, that hunger, that desire. Where the Capricorn goes about it, where they built a structure or a system that works. So instead of maybe going for qual, sorry, quantity, where the Aries usually goes for quantity. So if they're on a sales team, the Aries more likely will grab a specific product to sell and sell that one product that maybe is cheaper at a very consistent rate. You know, it's, it does not fail, right? And the Aries is gonna keep delivering that product, which is a cheaper product, not, I don't mean cheaper in a bad way, okay? But it's just in an, an easy, quick turnaround. Think quick turnaround because it's fire energy. He's, he or she is looking for quick results. So they'll do that one product and just, and they know it's going to, um, sell and so they're going to keep going with that rate and not uh, quit and that's how they have their their high sales rate or their number the capricorn is going to do quality over quantity but achieve the same goal so capricorn like i said will build a structure and say okay uh slowly how do i build a specific clientele that will close higher tickets but higher tickets that have higher value So what the Capricorn is doing is reaching the same amount of numbers, but with less, seemingly on the surface, it looks like less effort, but actually it's the same amount of effort. The Aries is putting in a lot of effort and a lot of energy and doing a lot. The Capricorn is also putting in a lot of effort and a lot of energy, but it's just, it's more in a way that's building everything around it. So build the structure, create the structure, Uh, move they don't mind slow results either the Capricorn is a quality over quantity person so here they have this they're reaching the same number but the Capricorn just reached it in a way that um, 
has more layers to it, again, more substance to it. So that's a part of what they find intriguing about each other as Capricorn looks at Aries and thinks, damn, that, <laughs> you just got all of this, you know, passion and this, um, this will to, to win and you know what you're doing and it never fails. Uh, and the Aries secretly, quietly is intrigued by the way that the Capricorn did something that the Aries is like, how did you make that work? <laughs> how did you possibly do that? And how is that working? You know, and the Aries loves looking at the Capricorn's quality over quantity approach that actually wins. Because uh, usually the Aries identifies that kind of energy uh, with someone who doesn't have the same kind of results. Um, kind of like the way an Aries will look at a water sign where, which will put a lot of uh, emotion into something, but it doesn't have the same um, return. The Capricorn will put a lot of substance into something, do it their own way, uh, uniquely create their own thing, and build a structure around it, and it succeeds. And that tends to be Capricorn in the workplace, <laughs> and, or wherever it is that they found each other. And the Aries is fast, the Capricorn is slow, and that's why they like each other. So that kind of is an example in terms of uh, their energies, how they meet up, how they see each other at first. Um, their public persona is also very similar. Same, same, but different with these two. That's what you have to think of. Uh, their public persona is similar in a sense where they both have a strong public demeanor. Uh, Capricorn doesn't always realize the intensity of their public image. Capricorn usually is kind of seeing themselves delusionally as adaptable, <laughs> where most of the time the Capricorn has a huge presence in a room or in an energy, uh, but the Capricorn wants to be low-key, kind of wants to be um, behind the scenes, but Capricorn has a huge presence. Uh, just because of the intensity or the depth, the authority going on with Capricorn representing the 10th, 10th house, Capricorn cannot go unseen, but kind of wants to make themselves seem like they're going unseen. Uh, but nonetheless, they tend to be really well put together, uh, statuesque, like I often say, and they demand or command authority. Uh, and they're doing whatever it is that they're doing their own way. Uh, but it also is something that screams authority in whatever field it is that they're in. Uh, the Aries is very similar. Aries will have a grandiose way of show, showing themselves in the world. Um, they are unafraid of attention. They like being a person of attention. They like being a leader. They like the uh, authority that they can command. Um, and they're showing up in the world again as as uh, leaders in whatever it is that they do. That's the thing with these two. They're both leaders. Less, they're, they're the same in a sense where they're both not focused on attention for attention's sake. Although Aries can be an attention seeker, <laughs> Aries is not the kind of attention seeker that is, um, I need to be the most popular person in the room. It's not that kind of attention seeking. Aries is the kind of attention seeking where it usually is in their interpersonal relationships um, versus like, oh, you know, it's not like the Leo energy where it's like, I need to be the star. I need to be that, that it person. It's more like Aries wants to be the authority. Aries wants to be the leader. They want eyes on them, but it's for, there's more layers to the eyes. Why are the eyes watching them? It's a, it's a, it's a, for a multitude of reasons kind of deal. And that's how Capricorn is the same. It's for a multitude of reasons why the eyes are on them and they like that, they want that. That's the kind of attention that they desire, but it tends to come off like both of them like to be behind the scenes, uh, even though Aries is louder, but the Aries' energy is not, again, it's not like a Leo where it's like, everybody look at me. It's more in a way where they like to do what it is that they do and then they like to kind of, um, figure out uh, the truth of what, whatever journey it is that they're on. So they tend to be very similar to Capricorn in that sense where it's like if the attention is for the purpose or uh, um, the moment, then I'll take it, but I don't need it all the time kind of deal. These are two people that really value authenticity and that's a part of what they really like about each other is how authentic they both are. Uh, they respect each other's 
realness a lot. And what it, what Capricorn finds in Aries is someone who, whatever it is that they believe, they do it. And Aries has a relentless uh, element of self-belief. Even when they get down on themselves, they still keep going. They still keep moving. And Capricorn admires that in Aries, even though Aries isn't always doing it consciously. It simply can just be based off of impulse. Whereas the Capricorn has to operate from an, a deep sense of self-belief in order to move. <laughs> if, an air, if a Capricorn is down on themselves, everything can go completely down. Everything can crash down. So a Capricorn's uh, belief in themselves and the way that they uh, see themselves is very important. That their emotional clarity is really important because if it's distorted, they can bring a whole, they can bring anybody around them down. They can bring a whole room down. Because no matter what they do, there's still that authority that still has that power, whether they want it or not. And their energy affects people. It just does. Where Aries doesn't affect people with the same uh, intensity, Capricorn does. So if an Aries is down, a Capricorn knows how to build an Aries up. If a Capricorn is down, the Aries doesn't always know what to do. Uh, the, Cap the Aries is like, whoa, you know, it's almost like a grandfather hitting the ground and the Aries is like the toddler trying to <laughs> pick the Capricorn up, but at the, at the end of the day, this is a small baby next to a big 70-year-old man. <laughs> it's, it's kind of that's the, the similarity or I guess the dynamic that tends to play out between them. Uh, so yeah, Capricorn loves how Aries just is balls to the wall and kind of just makes it happen. Uh, and Aries loves how, how Capricorn makes it happen. And Capricorn's integrity, maturity, um, dignity, uh, complexity, mystery, confusion, you know, and I say confusion because the Aries is often confused. What is, what is, what are they going to do next? You know, They're always, <laughs> Aries loves that uh, journey with Capricorn. Now, although people stereotypically call Capricorn boring, uh, with Aries, Aries, the closer Aries gets to Capricorn, the more intriguing they find Capricorn's energy because what is exciting about Capricorn is the fact that they are always, uh, striving for more so whatever whatever it is that they do it's always going to um surprise you you never know what it is that they're going to do next you never know how it is that they really feel or what's really running through their minds or um what step they will take and so they can be very intriguing and they're also not what you see is what you get with them uh Capricorn, again, is, is very multi-layered, and they don't always say how they feel. Where in Aries, is, it, this is how I feel, this is what it is, this is what I'm going to do. Uh, the Capricorn can make themselves seem like that's how they are, but that's not how they are. <laughs> Especially when the Aries and the Capricorn combine. Uh, the Aries spends a lot of time trying to figure Capricorn out, trying to figure out how Capricorn feels, what Capricorn really thinks. And Capricorn can kind of get stunted um, and need time to process, need time to uh, explain themselves or um, pick themselves up or, or contribute to the conversation, contribute to the energy. And that can be very difficult for Aries. Um, Aries can feel sometimes that Capricorn can't keep up with them and then uh, the Capricorn can't keep up with them. And then other times Aries feels like uh, they can't keep up with Capricorn, and it's it's a very really confusing thing. But the reason why is Cap and Cap Aries's energy is moving at this very quick rate, and Aries can be one for the drama. They can be one for the excitement, for um, the fire of life and living. And Capricorn likes things more subdued and likes things more um, down to earth in that sense. So what will happen is Aries can often feel. With the love between these two, Aries really respects Capricorn. Uh, if these two grow to love each other and move beyond lust, uh, <laughs> Aries really respects Capricorn. But oftentimes, Aries can grow to feel shame next to Capricorn because Capricorn, whether consciously or not, can make Aries feel like Aries is childish, uh, immature, not good enough, not on Capricorn's level. Um, doing too much, you know, Aries can start to kind of feel like they are dancing around the Capricorn instead of dancing with the Capricorn. And it can ignite shame 
um, because every Aries underneath all that fire is very Aries has a really big heart and doesn't always like to show their vulnerability. This is another way in which the two are similar because they feel emotionally safe with one another because both of them uh, give the world a strong face. Now, it's not to say that they are faking anything or they are not being authentic to themselves, but they give the world a strong face. They want uh, to keep uh, a strong sense of self and resilience in the face of it at, of adversity. Advers I keep saying that. You know the word that I mean. <laughs> um, and they don't like their vulnerabilities to be seen, mainly because they don't want their vulnerabilities to be used against them. Underneath every Aries is a secret people pleaser, and of, underneath every Capricorn is a highly sensitive, also people pleaser. So uh, both of them want to make sure that they're cutting the fat when it comes to their social dynamics and interacting with other people. And uh, Aries in specific really does not want to be taken advantage of. Aries really does not want to be seen as weak. Um, because for a lot of the people that have, are in their lives and maybe have known them for a very long time or very close to them, they're, they're seen sometimes not very, you know, people don't always take them seriously or they're seeing them as very immature or they hold them against the times in their lives where they weren't as great or they messed up or um, they went on the bad path or uh, wasn't as powerful as they seem now. So that's the case with Aries. Um, for every fight that you see them trying to win in their adulthood, it's because they lost many in their youth. Uh, for everything that they try to achieve in their adulthood, it's because they were things that they didn't think were possible in the past. Uh, again, Aries's Achilles heel is their tie to other people, their need to please other people, uh, keep the peace, be liked by other people, kind of make themselves small in order to uh, not rub anyone the wrong way. So that's why sometimes they'll just bulldoze right through it and be impulsive and aggressive and loud um, to fight that, basically, to fight the lower parts of themselves. Uh, Capricorn is, their fragility is, again, they're like Aries, a people pleaser, can be hypersensitive, can be the kind of person that um, their intuition, Capricorns are very intuitive, but in general, uh, having emotional control is important for them because their surface underneath is someone who can harbor a lot of um, emotional turmoil and also someone who can be, you know, pushed around or um, treated in a, in, a, in a poor way by other people because of that kind of uh, soft kind of demeanor where really they're not trying to rock the boat, but this can be perceived as weakness or... Um, fragility behind every Capricorn is someone who's experienced some kind of bullying as well. So them and Aries are neck and neck in terms of making sure that they are not in a position where they are vulnerable in a way that, um, that they felt at different points in their lives. And they respect that about each other. Uh, something that Capricorn is more aware of more than Aries is that Aries may not necessarily be entirely aware of it, but a part of Capricorn's way of dealing with Aries is to not put Aries in a position where Aries is going to deal with any kind of humiliation or Aries has to deal with feeling like their past is is keeping up with them or um, someone's going to try to tell them that they can't do it or they can't achieve it. This is something Capricorn's aware of and Capricorn tries to honor Aries in that way. The, difficult, the difficulty, however, is Aries doesn't always honor Capricorn uh, and it's because Aries can be impulsive and very selfish and driven by their raw emotions. So as stable as Aries tries to kind of project themselves and as directed as they might want to be, that toddler can kind of take over and they can just go all out. And when an Aries decides to go all out, they go all out completely. And they can be very abusive to their Capricorn, especially if they're in love. They can be very abusive to their Capricorn energy. Uh, and the Capricorn will take it and frankly deal with the abuse. <laughs> the Capricorn can, uh, just with the desire to keep the peace again or not rupture too much or 
create too much of a problem, the Capricorn will allow themselves to kind of take on the brunt of the Aries energy, allowing themselves to kind of become a tree that's on fire. And trees don't want to be on fire. <laughs> so this is very bad for the relationship because the Capricorn needs to stand in their own power when it comes to the Aries and really buck up and buck back. Uh, when it comes to Aries and the problem is a lot of the time when Aries is bucking they don't always necessarily realize the damage that they're doing to the Capricorn because they don't always realize that the Capricorn is trying to uh, be respectful to them or trying to honor them by keeping emotional control not that they're signing up to be a punching bag um, and so this creates the kind of dynamic where the anti-drama sign, which is the Capricorn, meets up with a sign that loves drama, like the Aries. Uh, and it creates a combustible combination uh, because what will happen is the Capricorn will only take abuse to a certain extent. The deep, And this is why the core of one of their biggest conflicts with each other is anger. Because when a Capricorn gets angry, when the Cap when the devil gets angry, okay, run. And the Aries is one who is known for their anger, and most people run from the Aries. But if there is one sign that the Aries runs from when they're angry, it is the Capricorn. Because it's, it's, a, it's a combination of all of these emotions that they have been holding in all the times that the Aries said something that hurt them and they didn't say but for all the times the Aries said something that the Capricorn just took in and didn't uh, speak on. For every time the Capricorn betrayed themselves by trying to keep the peace. For every time the Aries, the Capricorn took a punch and didn't punch back, now the goat is angry. And their eyes are red. And they are the devil. <laughs> and you need to run. Those horns become sharp as ever. And all of the, the nice kind of... Uh, ambitious but well-mannered Capricorn that the Aries has grown to really love and respect and kind of look up to and appreciate is now out for blood and there isn't anything the Aries can do about it because the Capricorn when they are out for blood they not only become very angry to a point where they can lose control they also can become uh, longevity uh, returners. So similar to Scorpio, like Capricorn is not afraid to seek revenge. If they are, if, if all, if they have gotten to a point where their anger has, where they feel like a person has pushed them beyond their threshold, they just feel in their minds, they say that they are justified. They, so they, in terms of this relationship dynamic, it can be it can frankly become dangerous because of that, because the Aries can push and push and push, and the Capricorn will take and take and take until the Capricorn is no longer interested in taking, and then all hell can in fact break loose. Uh, and so the biggest thing I would suggest in terms of that is Aries calm the hell down and realize that just because the Capricorn isn't fighting back does not mean that the Capricorn is just so comfortable with taking all of your hits. Um, or or because what happens in the Aries mind is they are looking for a reaction and it's not to say that there are just these you know high vibrational Aries are not just these horrible people that are just abusive just for the sake of being abusive they want a, they're looking for an emotional reaction because they are very emotional people Aries are, are very emotional fire energy is as it is you know so it's not emotion in the traditional sense uh, but it is emotion in a, in a more surface level sense. So getting a reaction out of the Capricorn shows the Aries that the Capricorn cares or that they're affecting them, that, that they matter in a lot of ways. But Capricorn is not registering that. Capricorn is just trying to keep control of themselves. Capricorn is trying to uh, keep the peace, focus on the greater good, different things like that. So a lot of the time it will read to the Aries that the Capricorn doesn't care or the Capricorn is pretentious or the Capricorn uh, d is dismissing them. And so that will then make the Aries go even harder. <laughs> I go push it even further when uh, in reality it's, it's a misconstruction of the way in which uh, the Aries understands the Capricorn and where the Capricorn understands the Aries. It's important for Capricorn to give some kind of reaction or some kind of um, acknowledgement of the Aries and then put the conflict to bed and the Aries needs to understand when to stop. 
So from there, I will lead into the passion between these two. So sexually, uh, usually, honestly, these two find each other and they don't always lead to relationships. Most of the time when these two find each other, it is for the fun of it, to be honest with you. Uh, they tend to be highly attracted to one another physically in a way that um, neither one of them can always explain, you know, because uh, the two definitely usually give off a, a sexiness in the world, you know, uh, so traditionally speaking, they are like that, but they can give off such different energies that a person would think, you know, same, same, but different, right? It's, it, it has the same intention, but it shows up into completely different ways. So a person would think, hmm, why are these two combining with each other? Their, tra their draw to each other is something that uh, can be fun and lusty, very lusty, <laughs> very uh, uh, friends with benefits -y kind of deal or kissing colleagues, you know, uh, kind of situation with these two. They could be in a long-term situationship with each other that actually functions really well and very and is very healthy for a long period of time um, without anybody knowing about it. <laughs> they could uh, be those colleagues that after, you know, in at work, they seem so professional and like they just get along in such a professional way. And then no one knows that after, you know, they are meeting up and have a whole secret relationship or situationship that no one knows about, you know, uh, they can treat each other very well in terms of honoring their public images, uh, honoring uh, their relationships and the way the two navigate. Independence is key for these two in order for them to work well together. Codependency does not work on these two. When they both live their lives separately and then come together, that's when things flourish. Because if they don't, then it's just going gonna, gonna to be destructive. Um, they need that in order to create a safe space with each other. So yeah, so um, that's why most of the time they tend to work in, yeah, great, but a lot of temporary type situations or, you know, just strictly physical. Uh, and then they can leave the situation with each other and not be escaped. Usually the Aries ends up more hurt than the Capricorn. Um, the Aries could think that it was going to go somewhere, but then the Capricorn kind of cuts it off and says, no, it's not going to work. Um, and it's not to say that Aries aren't players or are the weaker one because sometimes people look at that look at it that way and no it's not the case it's just uh usually capricorn's coldness can be hurtful to aries um and aries can oftentimes find themselves really oddly out of nowhere very drawn to the capricorn ways in ways that they did not expect the situation ship was working just fine and then all of a sudden aries realizes like wait a minute my heart is feeling flustered by this person and I want to hang up my old ways in order to connect with this Capricorn. Uh, but the Capricorn made up in their minds not to emotionally invest in order to protect themselves. So oftentimes that's how it ends up. Um, and then next to that, if they do end up getting into a long-term relationship, it's because the Capricorn surrendered emotionally and the Aries was consistent in also surrendering uh, the Aries will more likely surrender before the Capricorn, and the Aries will show genuine interest before the Capricorn, and then that's how the Capricorn will feel safe in terms of letting the Aries in. Uh, usually Aries will make the first move in terms of commitment, um, but the Aries has to show consistency and maturity, and then the two, and the Capricorn needs to show emotions and actual interest <laughs> instead of being so kind of, you have to chase me, you know, those Capricorns, they can have that, but you know, those Capricorns, they can have that elusive, you can't really touch them, aloof kind of energy to them, similar to Aquarius. Uh, so yeah, when the two decide to actually meet in the middle, put pride aside, Capricorn fear, <laughs> Aries actual pride, uh, when the Aries says that they want to live a more grounded life, and the Capricorn says that they can actually allow themselves to trust someone that maybe is a little bit um, out there or someone that could be a little bit of a risk, then the two find themselves together and actually they can have a really great long-term relationship with each other that works very well. 
one that has equal parts independence, a lot of honesty, a lot of ambition, a lot of drive, and a lot of respect. Respect is the key to what keeps them going with one another because they respect each other a lot. They value the way each other shows up in the world and they know how to make the other one grow exponentially. The two of these get together and it's like, boom, you know? Uh, so that's one of the great things about them. Um, Sexually, like I was saying, uh, they have a, an intense volcanic dynamic. So lots of passion here when fire meets earth. Boom. <laughs> uh, the Aries is lusty and both are animalistic and lusty. And where the Aries is more intensity turned all the way up, and then uh, not necessarily looking for always the longevity or something really, really long. It's more like the most intense, exciting, boom moment. The Capricorn loves that. The Capricorn, despite how it is that the Capricorn may seem on the outside, Capricorn has a strong libido and loves to engage in all things physical and all of the different spaces that the Capricorn can go with that and adapt to the Aries energy. And Capricorn loves when it's that um, kind of overwhelming lust moment. Capricorn tends to be a sucker for anything that makes them lose control. So they like the fact that the Aries puts them in a, in a sexual energy that makes them feel like they've lost control. Like they they are just at the whim of this passion, you know? Um, which is why a lot of the time this tends to be a more lighthearted relationship. But when it gets deep and when they are in love, oh my goodness, the Capricorn takes the Aries' passion and roots it and expands it so their love making is longer so whereas aries usually is shorter the capricorn merges with the aries and knows how to create this long cut climactic draw between the two because the capricorn studies the aries understands the aries understands the way that the aries operates and thinks and and capricorn is a big giver as well as receiver when it comes to love making so and they want it to last so they will match up with the Aries energy and uh, pretty much do things to prolong the act in itself. And the Aries will be excited and interested in all of the adventurous places that the Capricorn takes them um, when it comes to lovemaking. Because lovemaking in general is where Capricorn tends to let loose completely and they really like to just go in so many different spaces. So it can be very adventurous and very exciting and interesting for the Aries to want to just keep going longer and longer and maintaining that that uh, initial intensity and that initial passion can last for a longer amount of time. Uh, these two can feel very uh, kind of addicted to each other in a sense, like the Aries can love to grab and pull and scratch and claw the Capricorn. Uh, and, the, <laughs> and the Capricorn loves all of it, it loves to be scratched and pulled and grabbed and uh, the Capricorn feminine loves the, the Aries masculine's ability to take her whole body and kind of just toss it around, I guess, or um, without fear, because the, the Aries is fearless, without fear, he can just uh, approach her, right, and just cross boundaries, and he doesn't care. Um, the Capricorn masculine loves the way that the Aries feminine can just, again, give full intense passion <laughs> so she's going to crash into him and again unapologetic with the scratching and the clawing and the pulling she's going to pull his shirt and rip it off and bite his neck and um she also is unafraid to be uh masculine in her own approach so she can too take him and grab him and pull him and uh push him <laughs> and, and dominate him um and he loves that so these two just tend to have a very great dynamic in terms of uh, doing a lot of work to build a good life for each other, uh, separating from their own individual paths and being able to meet together to have a wonderful, very calm and very um, just, just a power couple type of dynamic going on between the two of them. So when they do spend time together, they can vacation a lot together. They can go on a lot of hikes, a lot of 
deep sea diving, zip lining, skydiving. They like to do a lot of things like that together. And then they can also like to spend a lot of really nice, just calm time together where the two are just hand holding and, you know, looking out at the beach and a vacation house that they both worked really hard to get from their assets shared together. Uh, and then when they're independent, they're doing completely different things. One has one career, one has the other, and they're both crushing it. And that is how the two work. When they destroy or when destruction happens is when they are too close, try too much to do the same thing, and are stepping on each other's toes. And also when the Aries uh, does not know how to respect or honor the Capricorn and allows themselves to be too unhinged, and when the Capricorn will shut down and take the Aries into a space where the Aries feels like the Capricorn can no longer be found because the Aries will keep banging on that door, trying to get a Capricorn to open it. And the more the Aries bangs, the more the Capricorn will keep the door closed. So not good. Control the anger. Breathe deep. <laughs> Respect each other. Keep your hands to yourself. And this combination is beautiful. Okay, so that's my interpretation of the Aries-Capricorn compatibility. Uh, let me know your thoughts. I love you.